Hey, North Texas, welcome to the Fan Sports Show. It is the finally, thank goodness, it is Friday edition of the Fan Sports Show. We are coming to you live from Sherlock's in Dallas in Caruth Plaza, right across from North Park Mall. You have a chance to come on out here and join us. We'll be here for the whole hour until 7.30 tonight, and we have got you covered, and you are getting ready for a big Super Bowl weekend. We will go live to New Orleans in just a moment, where Babe Laufenberg is standing by with more reaction on what's going on with the Dallas Cowboys. We'll hear from Jason Witten on a day in which he had a lovely honor. We're also going to hear from Troy Aikman and Roger Staubach. Babe Laufenberg sat down with them to talk about their legacy and much more. Also, what about Danny White? He's another quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys who is loved by many. But what is his legacy? We'll discuss that. And Tony Romo, what will his legacy be when his career is over? Also, we will know who will be going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame a little bit later this year. Tomorrow, that announcement will be made as the voters will vote and elect five men into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Who has a chance of getting in with former Cowboy ties? We will discuss that and much more all in the next hour right here on the Fan Sports Show. Steve Dennis is standing by to do that with me. Bill Jones is back in studio. We are starting with our focus this evening on what else? Super Bowl 47 and the challenge of winning a Lombardi trophy each and every year is a tough one but while New Orleans is a great place to be for the game staying focused on the game and trying to avoid the decadence that city offers might just be a challenge for the 49ers and the Ravens a little bit of sacrifice this week by players and personnel and staff involved with both teams will yield big dividends for one team now when the 49ers and Ravens meet on Sunday not only will one team mark its place in history the players are going to get paid too players on the winning team receive $88,000. Those on the losing team won't go home empty-handed. They'll deposit forty-four grand in their pockets. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell posted his annual State of the NFL address today. Here's what he thinks. The game is exciting, competitive, tough, and safer. We are making the game better while also evolving to a health and safety culture. That is a big priority. Any Friday in New Orleans is a good one. Uh, Super Bowl Friday, the Friday before the Super Bowl, being in that city is a great day to be there. He gets all the good assignments. I'm talking, of course, about Babe Laufenberg standing in front of the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. Beautiful night, Babe, beautiful town. I'm sure it's a great place to be. Yeah, we're out at the Superdome. We're about, well, I guess we're about two miles or so from the French Quarter, and you know it'll be hopping down there. We may have to find out after our 10 o'clock show on CBS 11. All right, every ask, everybody down here, they ask me one simple question. You do all the radio shows, and they say, hey, who's going to win? I don't know. Here's my take on it, though. The San Francisco 49ers is a better team with better personnel. Colin Kaepernick making just his 10th NFL start. However, the Baltimore Ravens just appear to have that look of a team on a mission. When you go to Denver and beat Peyton Manning there, then to New England and beat Tom Brady there, you're hard to beat. All right, but that's why I don't bet on football, because I can bet either way on this one. All right, Jason Witten, he is in New Orleans as one of three finalists for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. That award will be announced tomorrow. While that would be a tremendous honor for the Pro Bowl tight end, he has his eyes on a bigger prize. Witten is hopeful. The offseason of change will have the Cowboys playing in one of these Super Bowls soon and that the construction process is already underway. We've got to build something, you know, and, and the foundation is being laid, but ultimately we know it's a bottom line business and the results have to come. And um, I know Jason's doing everything he can to put it in place to give us a chance to do that and everybody on that staff. We as players know the results, results got to come and um, that's what we're working to do and it's got to, it's got to happen. You can't talk about it, as, as you guys know. And Gina, interestingly enough, Jason Witten, as we all know, set a new NFL record for receptions by a tight end, and his tight end coach effectively got fired. So I don't know what more he could have done. So how disappointed was he? What, what sense did you get of disappointment from Jason Witten that, you know, hey, the guy who did sort of help him, John Garrett, is no longer with this team? Yeah, he was very disappointed in that, actually. Uh, he, he had a lot of kind words to say about John Garrett earlier this morning. And the interesting thing is, hey, when John Garrett got here, I told him, you are just going to fall in love with this guy. All he wants to do is work harder, please you. I mean, he's every coach's dream. 
that and the fact that he's a great, great football player. Here's the interesting thing, too, though, Gina. I see his career, and he talked about the building process that the Cowboys are now under with changes, uh, as Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez, of course, surefire Hall of Famer, won his first playoff game this year with the Atlanta Falcons. Jason Witten has only one playoff victory as well. So I know he wants to get started because he's certainly closer to the end of his career than he is to the beginning. Thanks, Babe. We'll have more from you a little bit later in the show. More with Babe a little later. Time now to focus on the Cowboys owner and GM, Jerry Jones, because his team will have two former Cowboys, Cowboys, I should say, as well as two former Cowboys and a coach who could earn entry into the Pro Football Hall of Fame tomorrow. So what does that mean to Jerry? And uh, see if you can figure out what he means when he speaks to Mickey Spagnola about Jason Garrett's play calling and the responsibilities his head coach is going to have going forward. He discussed it with Cowboys TV's Mickey Spagnola. I'm excited. Boy, we've got a good man in Jason Garrett putting this together for us. He's got a unique position. He knows what Romo is and isn't better than anybody. He knows our key players better than anybody. Jason is putting together a staff and philosophy on every phase of the team uh, and allocating his time to helping us win a football game now and in the future. And one of the things I'm the happiest about is who we've got putting this together in Jason Garrett. Okay, here with Steve Dennis now. Can you can you translate <laughs> what that means in Jerry speak? That, can that be a new language, by the way? It, Jerry it, speak. It should be. We're getting yeah. pretty good at it. Well, I, I can tell you this: he was going backwards. Because okay, is where he was going with that Jerry speak. Let's set this stage because at the Senior Bowl, the responsibilities for Jason Garrett in terms of calling plays for this team had been yanked out from under yanked him. Yanked away from him. Uh, you know, it's Jerry understands that the spin has spun out of control. Uh, here lately, so he decided to hop on his own website and, and try to get some control of the spin. Now, he, he was praising Jason Garrett so much there that I think he pulled his abductor muscle. <laughs> Abductor. Abductor. Every, everybody's pulling that darn muscle. But this is what he should have been doing, in my opinion, when the season ended. Praise Jason Garrett like that immediately when the season ends because, you know, show the belief in him. This is why I hired him. Now he's doing it because he has to, he feels like, because of how this thing is spun out of control. But this on. isn't going to change, is it? Jason Garrett will still not have the play calling duties next year. This is all PR. Well, he's, he's telling us that somebody else is going to have the play calling, but Jason's going to be in charge of him having the play call. And, and tell me on a scale <laughs> of 1 to 10 how much you believe that. Well, uh, again, I well... I don't, I don't believe any of it. I think that Jerry, you know, made decisions uh, that Jason Garrett had very little to do with, including taking the play calling away from him. Uh, but he's backing up now. He's, wait a minute, that's not what I meant. Uh, J Jason's the right guy. Y Jerry is smart enough to know that you can't undercut your head coach like that. And I think that he realizes that he may have done that. So I think he's doing the best he can to... Uh, Make up for it? It's, Get it's, out of the, the, the trouble he got in? It's that reactive PR, Steve, and that's rarely a very good thing. You talk to anybody, he's backtracking, he's backpedaling, whatever sports analogy you want to use. But I will say this, though, and we've talked about this on your show before. We don't know what conversations sure, Jerry and true. Jason have had at Valley Ranch. And so There's Jason, been no transparency, so we haven't been out there. So it could, you know, I, I had a feeling that the conversations could have been a lot different than we think. Jerry just didn't articulate it well in public. You know what I mean? Jerry yeah, sometimes just says stuff and it doesn't come out the way he means for it so to. So then do you think they would serve themselves a little bit better if they came out and said, look, and they don't owe us this at all without question, but, but just to kind of calm everyone down, to quiet all the speculation, come out and say, this is what happened. And whether or not it's true, doesn't really matter. They can at least say, hey, we addressed it. This is what happened. Let's move on. Well, I wish Jerry would, would have a news conference and let us ask questions of him and Jason and try to figure out what's going on. Instead, he goes on his website and tries to control the spin. And then the perception there is, well... I mean, we're not dummies. No. We're not no. dummies. No. I mean, you know, we're just not. <laughs> or we... 
Well, you answer that. <laughs> and you can answer that by tweeting us at ask, or excuse me, hashtag TXA21Fan. We want you to weigh in the show tonight. Coming up next, we are hearing from Troy Aikman and Roger Staubach, two of the best to play the game. They played for the Dallas Cowboys. They sat down with our own Babe Lothenberg. He asked them about playing on the Super Stage. We've got that story when we come back. And, of course, we want your comments. Do you think Steve and I are idiots? Don't answer that. I'm just kidding. Tweet well, us. Uh, half, of, half of us are. <laughs> no, that's not true. Use the hashtag TXA21Fan. We'll use your tweets on the show. Back live from Sherlock's in Dallas in just a moment.